Hello, lovely people. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our five minute review playlist. In the last videos, we talked about membranous nephropathy, diabetic nephropathy, and amyloid nephropathy. Today, it's time to discuss diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis. If it ends in itis, it's a nephritic syndrome. This disease is nephritic and nephrotic in the same time. If it's nephrotic, you're gonna lose protein in the urine. If it's nephritic, you're gonna lose blood in the urine. And in this disease, you lose both proteins and blood in the urine. When the patient has diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis, you can bet the rent money. The patient has lupus. This is my 5-minute review playlist. Please watch these videos in order. If you just want to watch the kidney ones, there is a playlist called Nephrology. Especially the ones about kidney disease, such as nephrotic syndrome, minimal change disease, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, membranous, diabetic, amyloid nephropathy, etc. Diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis is nephrotic and nephritic. If it's nephrotic, you're losing protein in the urine and you can get edema. Normal kidney is like a normal colander, but nephrotic kidney is like a bad colander. It lets protein through. You're losing protein in the urine. When you lose protein in the urine, you lose your oncotic pressure. Hashtag edema. When I have nephrotic syndrome, there will be high protein in my urea, low protein in my emia, edema, and hyperlipidemia. When I have nephritic, itis means inflammation. Oh, the kidney is inflamed. What's going to happen? Blood in the urine high blood pressure, hematuria and hypertension, don't forget these. In the next videos, we will add more symptoms to the nephritic syndrome. But the moral of the story is, if your patient has diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis, it means, number one, they have lupus. Number two, they have nephrotic and nephritic, so they are losing protein and blood in the urine. Let's review what we have discussed before. Nephrotic syndrome, minimal change disease, focal segmental, glomerulosclerosis, membranous nephropathy, diabetic nephropathy, amyloid nephropathy. Today we're talking about this doofus right here. Diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis, which includes nephrotic and nephritic in the same patient at the same time. When I say focal, it means only few glomeruli. When I say diffuse, almost all of the glomeruli are affected. When I say segmental, only a segment of the nephron is affected. But what about proliferative? Proliferative means that the glomerulus is getting hypercellular. So when I say diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis, it means that basically almost all of your glomeruli are affected and they are hypercellular. They are inflamed, that's why it ends in itis, and you're leaking protein and blood in the urine. A good kidney should not filter plasma proteins and should not filter red blood cells. But this kidney is screwed. It lets protein and blood in the urine. This is your normal kidney right here. Afferent arterial, capillary tuft, efferent arterial. And then let's talk about the layers. Here you have endothelium, and then a basement membrane, and then podocyte. In diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis, what's happening here? What's happening is that this glomerulus is inflamed. Okay, that's why we call it itis. We also have immune complex deposits were under the endothelium. Subendothelial deposits, they destroy your capillary tuft. And this will get hypercellular and crazy. It will start looking like this. You see that? Yep. We call this wire looping. Thick, inflamed, tons of deposition, and looks curly like this. We call this wire looping. Subendothelial deposits of immune complexes. Diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis is both nephrotic and nephritic, and your patient has lupus. This is your lovely basement membrane. Here you have the epithelium. Here is the endothelium. If I have diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis, I will have immune complex deposition here underneath the endothelium, called subendothelial immune complex deposition. How would I see this? Immune fluorescence under an electron microscope. And these deposits will cluster like this, and we call it a granular pattern. Let's talk about lupus very quickly. If you want to learn more about lupus, I have a video on lupus on my website, medicosisperfectionatus.com. 
What's the most common visceral organ involved in lupus? It's the kidney. We call it lupus nephritis. There are many criteria to help you diagnose lupus. One of them is a kidney disease. In lupus, we have immune complex deposition in your skin and in your kidney. When it comes to your kidney, these are subendothelial deposits right here, and they are granular in pattern. Most patients with lupus have kidney disease. What kind of kidney disease? Well, it depends. We have six classes. It could be very mild, like a minimal change of disease. Remember, minimal mesangial lupus nephritis. Or it could be class two, mesangial proliferative lupus nephritis, hypercellularity here. Or it could be focal lupus nephritis, or it could be diffuse lupus nephritis, which is today's topic, what we call diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis. This is the most common and the most severe form of lupus nephritis. Class five is membranous, Class 6 is advanced sclerosing lupus nephritis. Say goodbye to your kidney. 50 to 70% of lupus patients have kidney disease. It could be nephritic, it could be nephrotic, it could be both. For example, diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis is nephritic. Membranous nephropathy is mostly nephrotic. A common cause of death is chronic kidney disease, which ends up in end-stage renal disease. When your GFR is very low. We talked about minimal change disease before. Remember, the patient is young, prognosis was excellent. Remember, steroids. Then we talked about focal segmental. The patient is older, the disease is more severe, usually HIV or heroin or parvo B19. The prognosis is not as good. Then we compared between the two diseases in previous videos. Then we talked about membranous, where your glomerular basement membrane is super thick, spikes and domes. This is the most likely nephrotic syndrome to cause renal vein thrombosis, DVT, PE, etc. If you have chronic uncontrolled diabetes for more than 10 years, you get diabetic nephropathy. Remember to give ACE inhibitors and to manage the diabetes. Hyaline arteriolosclerosis claims style Wilson nodule. Amyloid nephropathy could be primary amyloidosis or secondary amyloidosis. Amyloid deposition, Congo red, apple green biorefringence. You cannot treat it without treating the underlying disease. Now it's time to talk about diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis. The patient has lupus. Diffuse proliferative is the most common and most severe subtype of lupus nephritis. It has nephrotic and nephritic. The patient is losing protein and blood in the urine. Blood pressure is usually high. Immunofluorescence, you see granular subendothelial immune complexes. I also see this on electron microscopy. On light microscopy, Tons of neutrophils, itis means inflammation, hyaline thrombi, and the capillaries are weird and they look like a wire loop. Eventually, this will lead to scarring of the glomeruli. Say goodbye to your kidney. Treatment. Give steroids, cyclophosphamide, as early as you can. These are immunosuppressive because lupus is an autoimmune disease. Prognosis is horrible eventually will cause rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis, which can lead to chronic renal failure and stage renal disease. Rest in peace. We're gonna miss you. Lupus is so horrible. I'm not making fun of patients. I'm trying to make medicine easy for medical students so that you can help patients. End stage renal disease is when your GFR is less than 15 ml per minute. Normally, it should be 125. This is so low. Pause and review. I have close to 1000 videos on this YouTube channel, but I have premium courses on my website, such as the Renal Physiology course. My website is medicosisperfectionitis.com. I also have an acid base imbalance course and a cardiac pharmacology course. And while most students are not studying in January, you, my friend, are the exception. So here is a 60% discount for you. Just use promo code New Year Learning. And this discount applies to any product on my website. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website, download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.